All right, so one last interesting problem to solve. Suppose we're doing a transfer. Okay, I'm transferring money from 001 to 004. You're transferring money from 004 to 001. We both walk up to the, I haven't been that skinny in years, so. <laughs> and I was never tall to begin with, so okay. Not me, one of you handsome folks. Uh, where you go up to the, um, the teller machines and you, you run this code. You can see they're, they're very careful locking the accounts and everything. So this has a problem called deadlock. What is the problem? See if, see if you can think through what the problem is. Think of each person coming up and running the code. Notice the order of the arguments is different. The first argument here is 6001. Second argument here is, the first argument here is 6004. So imagine I'm running the code and you're running the code. So what's the first thing you do? You're, you're, you're this, this person here. So you're going to wait for a lock on the 001 account. And you get it because you're not manipulating the 001 account. At the same time I'm running down here, I've, I've changed gender um, and have more hair than I usually do. Um, whoops. I've gone off and I've, done, I've gotten a lock on 6004. Now what's the second thing each of us tries? And will I succeed? Will you succeed? No, why not? Because the other person has the lock. So now we're stuck, right? You sort of look at this and say, well, this is a crummy idea. You know, you, you know, you've been touting semaphores as this wonderful panacea that solves all these problems. And now we have a slightly simpler, uh, more complicated thing where what we're trying to do is to access two independent resources. And if you acquire the lock to one and I acquire the lock to, other, to the other, so we can manipulate them both, okay, our, our goal is for each of us to manipulate them both, what will happen now is that we go into what's called deadlock. We're stuck. None of us, we're, there's no, no way for us to, to get out of this. Okay, so this is sort of the toy problem that you always hear about is the dining philosophers. There's a big table, in this case it has five philosophers. You should amuse yourself by figuring out who each of the philosophers are. Um, uh, and then uh, there's five chopsticks, and the goal is that you pick up one, the, 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 they wait for their left chopstick, they pick it up, they wait for and pick up the right chopstick, and now they can eat. Okay, although my experience of using chopsticks to eat turkey has not been successful, but these guys are skilled, obviously. Um, Okay, and they can eat. And what's the problem here? Why, what's, you know, wh how is this an example of deadlock? What can go wrong? Yes? Right, they all reach out and grab their left chopstick, and then they all look at the table and you go, oh, ha, ha, all the chopsticks are gone. Right, so notice that there's just there, there are five chopsticks and five philosophers. Okay, so this is this is the deadlock situation, right? Just they're all sitting here, and here's the so basically, since the chop, you know, everybody can grab one chopstick, and only one person can have the chopstick at a time. So there's this notion of exclusive use of a resource. This notion that once you grab the resource, you're not going to let go until you're done. So it's hold and wait. You're going to waiting on something else, and you're, you're not going to let go of the chopstick that you have. Okay. And there's no preemption. There's no way to, to say, okay, give me back the chopstick. You know, we're going to have to solve this problem some other way. So now we have this circular wait going on. And, you know, the turkey is saved, um, sort of. Um, but the solutions, what are the solutions to this problem? And the answer is, we either need to avoid it, we need to come up with a, a change in our strategy of using semaphores to avoid this problem, or we have to detect it and then you know, have the system sort of in some more global way reach out and solve the problem for us. So we can write our code sort of naively, um, particularly if we're, all, we're, you know, we're writing the code for all the philosophers. We can figure out a, a better piece of code that solves the problem so that we avoid it. But if we have uncooperative processes that are still trying to, might go into deadlock, the best we can do is discover that they're in deadlock. And we can do that because we see that they're each waiting for something that somebody else already has and will never give up. Okay, and simply, you know, kill the process or restart the transaction, something like that. Okay, so there's a simple way to solve this problem which is to number the chopsticks, and instead of going to left and right, simply pick the lowest chopstick first and then your highest one. 
right? And this simple notion of acquire, of ordering, coming up with a total ordering of all the resources that, that you're competing for, and always acquire them in the same order. So what's the solution with the 001, 004 problem? Even though both of us naively would want to access you know, our first account and then the second account, well, in fact, access the accounts in the order, numerical order, which means that if we're both trying to manipulate 001 and 004, each of us will try to get the lock for the 001 account first and then the 004 account. And by the fact that we've now placed this global ordering, we solve the, there's no possibility of deadlock anymore because the person who gets the 001 account will, will also then get the 004 account because the other person is now waiting for the 001 account, right? So does that make sense? So this notion of a global ordering is, 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 is good, but you basically have to agree with everybody on what the order is. And you can imagine in a large operating system when there's just lots of resources to be managed, Right, the idea of going up and saying, okay, we have to assign every resource in the system a unique increasing integer, those are the sort of things that software people tend to want to avoid, this sort of central you know, authority that sort of organizing some sort of relationship among everything that's possible turns out to be sort of cumbersome. Okay, so this is a solution that works when you can write all the code, like the bank can, it works less well if you're trying to you know, manipulate two things in the operating system, this device and that device, and you don't have control over all the drivers and stuff like that. So um, the deadlocks can be a substantial problem. And it's a real pain because you're going along, your system freezes, and you, know, you say, well, is it a loop in the kernel or is it perhaps some deadlock situation? So if you go examine all the status fields, you can say, wait, process one is waiting, has a resource and is waiting for something, and process two has the resource that process one is waiting for, and, but it's waiting for something else, and you, know, you can sort of identify the circular weights. Okay, so it turns out semaphores are a really neat idea with the exception of trying to deal with this deadlock problem, and that you have to think a little bit about. But if in many situations we don't have the deadlock problem, we can simply, we have very simple precedence constraints we're trying to, um, half and, and or mutual exclusion. So we've introduced a new data for called semaphore, semaphore, a new data type called semaphores. It has a weight operation and a signal operation and we can parlay that into basically synchronizing communicating processes which is sort of a pretty neat thing to do in the modern world. Okay, stop there. 